Hello, students of science. Let's talk about the human respiratory system. So we start off with the structures of the human respiratory system. Some of these you already may have, some of these you already may know. Uh, copy down the ones that you don't have or you don't know or you like the more complete answer. You will also find these on page three of your packet. All right, we start off with, of course, the nose. Now, when you come to it, the nose has multiple jobs. It filters with, of course, the mucus that lines your nose. It moistens the air and it warms any air that is going to be entering your body. Your pharynx, that's more or less the back of your throat. That's kind of the passageway for both air and food. So, you know, if you're choking, it's, you know, because food went down through the pharynx and, you know, sort of crammed up the trachea there. But the pharynx is the last place where both food and air pass through or are supposed to. Your larynx, also known as your vocal cords, or sometimes you'll hear them referred to as the vocal folds. These are this elastic folds of tissue. Those are the ones that actually vibrate and produce sound. Depending upon the time of day, your elastic folds may be more or less flexible, which is why you may have noticed sometimes that earlier in the morning, when they've been kind of, you know, relaxing all night, they can vibrate a little bit more, you can reach that lower register of sounds. As the day happens, as they warm up, they tighten up, and it's a little bit harder for you to reach those really low notes, but that's right in your vocal cords, your vocal folds. Your trachea, that is the uh, windpipe more or less, it contains rings of cartilage. You can actually feel it if you feel like putting your fingers to your throat. You can actually feel those rings of cartilage. That is permanently open. Your esophagus is right behind it. That's kind of a flattened tube. Your trachea is almost permanently open like a snorkel because of course if that collapses you can't breathe and you know, bad day. So rings of cartilage that lead all the way from the mouth down into the lungs, then of course it branches off a little bit. Your bronchi and your bronchioles, you can see in this picture right here, the bronchi sort of split off right there, what's called the carina, and then they're going to further branch out into smaller and smaller and smaller things. The bronchi are the tubes in the lungs that ultimately lead down to those tiny, tiny little air socks called the alveoli. So gas exchange is, of course, oxygen in and carbon dioxide out. And that happens at the level of the alveoli, these tiny, tiny little air sacs, which, of course, are covered by capillaries. Because there, the blood is essentially going single file. That's the only place you can get gas exchange. The alveoli are these tiny, tiny air sacs covered in blood capillaries. And those air sacs are going to expand and contract, expand and contract. And the blood vessels that cover them, of course, have the ability to diffuse that carbon dioxide out so that when the alveoli alveoli contract, it'll send the carbon dioxide out, and of course when the alveoli expand they're going to bring in oxygen and oxygenate the blood. So this is our site of gas exchange where the oxygen goes into the blood and carbon dioxide goes into the air for exhalation. And of course now we need to transport that oxygen around the body and that's where we get hemoglobin, our wonderful little protein whose job it is to bind with and transport oxygen. And if you've ever had someone test your iron, what they're really testing is your hemoglobin. This iron containing protein that sits in the middle of your red blood cells and your body is literally making trillions of these proteins every second because oxygen transport is so essential. And also at this transport here, carbon dioxide is going to dissolve in the blood plasma. So one of those four components of your blood, plasma is going to be the one where most of that carbon dioxide dissolves. But the oxygen binds to the hemoglobin inside your red blood cells. Now, breathing, of course, bringing in the air in and out so that you can get it down into those alveoli for gas exchange. You have muscles in your diaphragm and your rib cage that can contract and change the air pressure in your chest cavity. They can't suddenly suck it in. You know, what you really need is you just need to change the air pressure so the air is pushed in and then relaxes and then it's pushed out. So you have this big dome-shaped muscle at the bottom called your diaphragm. And here it is, when it's kind of arched like that, that is relaxed. When it contracts, it's flat, so it's... <sighs> but the actually breathing in, you have to contract that. That is when the muscle is actually, you know, contracting. When it relaxes, that's when it pushes the air out. So low air pressure inside the lungs is what actually is going to be pulling air in. So here we can see the diaphragm, this dome-shaped muscle. There it's relaxed. Now it's contracting, and of course it pulls air into the lungs by uh, changing the air pressure. When you relax the muscles, that's when the air is finally going to leave. So here we have that dome-shaped muscle down there, the diaphragm, and then you have these muscles in between uh, your ribs. Those are going to be the ones that when they contract, they lower the air pressure in there by increasing the volume, and that pushes air in. And then they relax, and it squeezes it and pushes the air back out.